This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Scientists believe that there could be up to 40 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy. And so far, we found 11 of them orbiting habitable zones of their stars within 50 light years. And in 2016, we found the closest Earth-like planet yet orbiting around Proxima Centauri b, only 4.2 light years away. What's especially exciting is this is literally the closest star to our solar system. It literally can't be any closer than that. In universal terms, it's our next door neighbor that shares a fence. The possibilities here are amazing. I mean, what if we found life there? What if we could actually go there someday? It's, it's right there. The thing is, the scale of the universe is like aggressively ridiculous. Even at only 4.2 light years away, the fastest man-made object we have ever created, the Parker Solar Probe that will eventually get to 430,000 miles an hour, would take 1,500 years to get there. So even if we find the perfect home in the very closest star system to ours, it might as well be on the other side of the galaxy. Way to be a Debbie Downer physics. As humans, our journey to other worlds is still in its infancy. <laughs> Hell, as of this recording, our only ride to low Earth orbit is out of commission. So yeah, we're failing so hard right now. But the fact remains, if we ever want to go interstellar, if we ever want to really explore the universe, we have to have a whole new type of technology based on a whole new type of physics. Luckily, the super nerds at NASA's Eagle Works are working on exactly that. NASA's Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory, informally known as Eagle Works, is challenging everything we know about propulsion and power. Now, while their research might not be as practical as, say, refining the spark igniter on a LOX methane engine, what they're doing is important because they're answering questions that other scientists aren't even asking. According to their founding document, link down in the description, their purpose is to, quote, pursue propulsion technologies necessary to enable human exploration of the solar system over the next 50 years, unquote. And their hope is that by the end of this century, we can use those same technologies for interstellar travel. The Eagle Works team is led by mad scientist-in-chief Dr. Harold Sonny White. Dr. White's been working on the fringe of propulsion science since the early 2000s when he put together a paper that described an actual implementation of a lot of our favorite science YouTuber subjects, the Alcubierre warp drive. Now, in case you're not familiar with Manuel Alcubierre, he's basically a guy who watched some episodes of Star Trek and decided to reverse Einstein's field equation so that he could actually create a warp drive by compressing space-time in front of an object. In other words, the ship itself is not traveling faster than light. In fact, the ship is not traveling through space-time at all. It just kind of exists in a bubble, and in the front of that bubble, it's contracting the fabric of space-time, and behind it, it's expanding it, causing it to travel faster than light can. The only problem is that initial calculations based on Alcubierre's paper predicted that it would take like a billion times the amount of energy in the entire universe to make this work. So, yeah, minor stumbling block. Luckily, over the years, scientists have whittled that down to a few times the energy of the sun, and now they got it right around the energy of the mass of Jupiter. So. Yay, progress. Dr. White proposed shaping the warp bubble as sort of like a wobbly donut. He felt with this implementation that we could probably reach Alpha Centauri in just a few weeks with no time dilation for about the same price as a car. You'd have to make half the car out of antimatter and losslessly combine those two and get propulsion that way, but you get the point. White was able to take this idea and a few other Rick Sanchez fever dreams to NASA talked them into getting him a room at Johnson Space Center and EagleWorks was born. The three main projects EagleWorks has worked on include validating a test warp field, generating thrust by tweaking quantum particles in a vacuum, and testing several resonant cavity thrusters, a subject I've covered before. They even built an instrument to test these theories called the White Jude Warp Field Interferometer. So an interferometer is a device that measures really tiny increments by splitting a laser, bouncing that laser off of two mirrors, and then realigning it and finding where the wavelengths interfere, hence interferometer. This is the same idea that they used in the LIGO uh, gravitational wave experiment. But the white Jude interferometer directs one half through an experimental warp field, then checks for evidence that the beam's path was shortened by a microscopic amount. And according to Dr. White, some of these tests have led to some positive results. The only problem is that the details are so precise that it's kind of hard to verify. I mean, even somebody walking down the hallway can, you know, kind of screw things up a little bit. Tests have actually been conducted on a floating table in a floating room to keep equipment from bouncing when people walk through the hall outside. Effects from electromagnetic pollution also have to be ruled out. But even if they get positive results, their effects are so minuscule, it's kind of hard to figure out how that could be scaled up to something that could actually push a ship. At the moment, we just don't have the knowledge of the kind of exotic energy that would be required to do such a thing. But if we ever did, Dr. White has a good idea of what it would look like. And this is what it would look like. Dubbed the IXS Enterprise, because obviously it is, Dr. White revealed this concept art in 2013 to give an idea of what an actual Akubier drive ship might look like. 
Featuring the rings that would create the warp bubble around the spacecraft in the correct proportions, with a little flair thrown in. This not only garners some attention for the work they're doing and stirred the imaginations of nerds all over, but it kind of helps keep their eyes on the prize. You know, it's easy to get bogged down in all the hard science. Sometimes you need a little reminder of what the end goal is. The other big concept that Eagle Works is working on is quantum vacuum thrusters. A quantum vacuum thruster, or QVT, is a theoretical engine that uses no propulsion to move a ship forward by exploiting a quality of empty space. Namely, that it's not that empty. According to quantum field theory, virtual particles are constantly being created and destroyed all the time. In particle and antiparticle pairs, they kind of appear and then recombine and disappear. And you can see this experimentally. If you take two non-metallic plates and put them close enough together, they'll actually get pulled towards each other because of the attraction created by all the antiparticle particle interactions. This is known as a Casimir effect. Dr. White and many other physicists believe that this effect can be used to actually generate propulsion. So one way to explain QVT thrusters is to look at the way a rocket is propelled uh, as opposed to a submarine. So a rocket, you fill it with fuel and then you push that fuel out one direction and it reacts by going the other direction, obviously with combustion on this side. But a submarine propeller creates momentum by pushing against the substance that the submarine is embedded in. In this case, it's the seawater. In the case of the QVT, it's actually the quantum vacuum that it's pushing against. The first QVTs they tested were designed by Eagle Works themselves, but some of the following ones that they worked on or tested came from other agencies like Boeing and DARPA, who created something called the Serrano Field Effect Thruster. And next, Eagle Works tested Roger Shawyer's M Drive, the controversial M Drive that uses microwave fields in a contained vessel to somehow create momentum. They also tested an advanced version of the M Drive called the Can A Drive. Both of these drives are called impossible drives by many media sites. The Eagle Works team did find minor amounts of thrust, but they're so spectacularly small that they're easily disputed by, you know, a number of factors that people have come up with. It's being measured in micronewtons. A micronewton is about the same force that an eyelash puts on a table. And the most recent studies into M-Drive by outside labs have not been good. But Dr. White hasn't given up on this entirely. He actually attributes some of the effects that he's seeing to pilot wave theory. And pilot wave theory enough is a reason to keep your head down, it's generally mocked in the scientific community. But to add to that a little bit, he's also attributed the Casimir effect that I was talking about earlier to the negative energy that would be necessary to create a warp drive. That negative energy could actually exist in the real world is enough to bring on skepticism, so linking it into all this stuff is kind of asking for more punishment. But these guys aren't playing in the same physics sandbox that the rest of us are. Like I said at the beginning, in order for us to do what we want to do, it requires a whole new type of physics. And you never know what you're gonna find until you play with it. And keep in mind, any kind of pure science, even if it fails spectacularly, can still lead to some positive outcomes in the real world. Before Einstein's theory of special relativity, two physicists, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley, tried to show that light can be slowed down by passing through invisible winds. Their theory, as we now know, was garbage. But in the process, they created the world's first interferometer, which Dr. White is now using to test his own crazy theories. It's the circle of life. Of course, like everything at NASA these days, their biggest issue is funding. Paul March, another collaborator at Eagle Works, once described in a speech how they had to bolt together a piece of the M drive because they couldn't afford to have it welded. This is unfortunate, but not surprising to me. NASA has a very limited budget, and of course, they're gonna focus on things that don't, you know, thumb their nose at Einstein. You know, there's a certain romance to lone mavericks like Paul March creating a resonant cavity thruster on his own kitchen table, which he totally did. But at a certain point, you need resources if you're gonna be successful. Luckily, about three years ago, somebody on Indiegogo created a campaign to help support the Eagle Works lab, and out of their million dollar goal, uh, they got $30. Ah, so close. But today there are several organizations also working on interstellar research. Icarus Interstellar is a nonprofit doing collaborative research, and the 100 Year Starship is a science outreach organization funded by NASA and DARPA and headed by Dr. Mae Jemison, the first woman of color in space. Both of these are groups that you can get involved in if you're interested in this kind of research. But I consider what these guys do is important. You know, yes, they're crazy ideas, but world changing ideas usually are in the beginning. Someday we're gonna have to leave our solar system. Our sun won't last forever, and we seem very hard determined to make our planet as inhospitable as possible as fast as possible. So here's, as they say, to the crazy ones. Next stop, Alpha Centauri.
Proxima Centauri B, Trappist 1, Gliese 581C, whichever exoplanet you would like to go to someday, you're going to need to have some understanding of the cosmos. A great place to start is Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an online learning platform with a twist. Instead of throwing facts and figures at you, they teach you how to figure things out for yourself to think like a scientist, so you can retain the concepts better and apply them in other parts of your life. Brilliant has an entire course on astronomy, which heavily features lessons on other worlds in the universe, and you can learn all about the forces that make it all work with their courses on gravitational physics and special relativity. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe and get access to their free weekly brain teasers and puzzles and the first 200 people that sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses can get 20% off your subscription for life. I love Brilliant. It's a lot of fun. So go check it out. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down in the description. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video and the wonderful, amazing answer files on Patreon that are building a wonderful community and doing all kinds of cool stuff. They are supporting this channel. I really want to thank them. There's some new people that have joined. Let me destroy their names real quick. We've got Chris Santero, Dragus D, uh, Sean Lahaki, Mike Lee, Sandro Petrovsky, Yannick, Adam Beautiful, uh, Peter Harrison, Robert Holland, Ole Mathis, Arseth Hegram, Crow Magnon Gramps, uh, CM Parini, Aaron Amos, Mistruzio Sifunio, and Kevin Smith, Silent Bob himself. Probably not the same guy. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get access to cool perks that other people don't get to have, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, check out some of my other videos. You might like those too. And if you do, hit subscribe. You'll be the first to see them every Monday. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.